The movie opens up with Teresa Tree Gelbman, a university student who's as attractive as her nickname is Stupid, waking up disoriented in the dorm room of her classmate Carter Davis. She finds herself wearing his clothes after a night of drunken partying. As the two talk, we get to know that it's Tree's birthday today, but she doesn't seem too excited about it. She even ignores a phone call from her father, suggesting that they have a strained relationship. After a while, Tree leaves Carter's room and heads back to her own. On the way, she notices several students going about their day. They are walking, chatting, and doing things a normal student would do. When Tree reaches her dorm, her roommate Lori Spengler gives her a cupcake as a birthday present. However, she throws it in the bin, citing that it has too many carbs. After attending her classes and a sorority meeting, Tree decides to visit her boyfriend, Dr. Gregory Butler's office at the campus hospital. As she arrives, she unexpectedly runs into Lori, who happens to be a nurse at the same hospital. Lori says that she is concerned about Tree's secret affair with with the married doctor. She believes that it is unethical and wrong, but Tree brushes off Lori's concerns and tells her to mind her own business. That night, as she leaves for a party, she is surprisingly followed by a figure wearing a mask of the school mascot. Tree notices him and tries to run away, but ends up falling to the ground. Taking full advantage of this, the mysterious figure catches up to her and murders her in cold blood. The next second, Tree wakes up in Carter's bed and assumes that it was just a bad dream. However, as she proceeds to leave, she realizes that the events from her nightmare are repeating themselves. Carter says the same things he said earlier, and when Tree goes outside, she notices the same students doing the same activities as in her nightmare. Moreover, when she reaches her dorm, Lori is waiting for her with a cupcake. The day is Monday, the 18th of September, just like in her nightmare. This makes Tree anxious, so she decides to be a bit more careful. Later, on her way to the party, she avoids taking the tunnel and reaches the venue safely, but unfortunately, as she is chatting with one of her friends, the mysterious figure arrives at the scene and kills both of them. In the next scene, Tree again wakes up in Carter's dorm, wearing his clothes. Realizing that the day has been reset due to her death, she frantically leaves for her dorm. On reaching it, she tells her roommate Lori about all that's been happening to her, but the latter brushes her off and asks her to relax. Following this, Tree locks herself in her room. She barricades her door and boards up her window hoping that the killer won't be able to come inside. But to her horror, he has already managed to get inside. In the blink of an eye, he attacks her from behind and kills her off. As expected, the day is reset, and Tree once again wakes up in her friend's room. Not knowing what to do, she invites Carter for lunch and tells him everything. The confused guy expectedly doesn't believe any of it, but just to make her feel good, he decides to help her. Carter speculates that perhaps Tree's recurring dreams have something to do with her birthday. They then make a list of people who might have a motive to kill her. Carter suggests that she can take advantage of the loop, since it gives her unlimited chances to figure out who the killer is. Tree absolutely loves the idea, so she spends the next several iterations trailing people she considers suspects, but each time she gets killed by the masked killer. After waking from a loop where she is bludgeoned, Tree is unable to walk and she passes out. Carter immediately rushes her to the hospital, and when she wakes up, Dr. Gregory reveals her medical reports show evidence of recovery from multiple traumatic injuries. These injuries are so severe that she should be dead right now. Hearing this, Tree figures out that the injuries she sustained from the previous deaths in her dreams are incurring real physical damage. This means that if she doesn't solve the situation soon, her body will get weaker by the day, and she might end up dying in her sleep. Fearing for her life, Tree decides to flee from the hospital. She sneaks into Gregory's office and steals his car keys, but as she is trying to escape, the masked killer suddenly shows up. Poor Gregory also arrives at the wrong time, and he is immediately killed. Meanwhile, Tree rushes for her life and somehow manages to flee from the hospital. Just as she thinks she made it out alive and starts to celebrate, she is stopped by the police for speeding. Tree figures out that it might be better for her if she is locked up in a jail cell. That way, she will be away from the killer. Hence, she lies to the officer that she was driving under the influence. The latter buys it and makes her sit in the police car, but right then, the killer arrives at the scene and runs the officer over. He then sets the car on fire and kills her. Huh, burning trees. The killer must be a stoner. Boom. You're right, that sucked. Following this, Tree wakes up in Carter's bed again. He inquires why she was screaming in her sleep, to which she frantically responds that she keeps getting murdered by an unknown person. Carter, who doesn't remember their previous meeting, believes that she is joking. But when Tree predicts the day's events currently, he is left in utter shock. All this time, she keeps ignoring her father's calls. Tree reveals that she was really close to her mother, who shared a birthday with her. However, three years ago, she tragically passed away, and this severed her relationship with her father. Later, as the two are talking at an eatery, they see a local news report on John 
Toombs. He is a serial killer who murdered six female victims. Toombs was the subject of nationwide, five-month-long pursuit, and he is currently being held at the campus hospital. It is revealed that he was involved in a shooting of a local police officer and is being treated for a gunshot wound. After the news report ends, Tree puts two and two together and concludes that Toombs is the masked killer. She immediately rushes to the hospital and warns the employees there that Toombs is going to escape. However, it is too late, as when she reaches the room, she finds a dead police officer. The masked man also arrives there and starts chasing Tree with a gun. He then takes off his mask and almost kills her, but Carter intervenes on time and rescues her. Unfortunately, he pays the price and gets killed by Toombs. The psychotic killer then chases Tree to a nearby bell tower and eventually catches up to her. But this time, our protagonist is well prepared. She swings a crowbar at his head and knocks him out. However, as Tree prepares to kill Toombs, she realizes that if she doesn't reset the day, her best friend Carter will remain dead forever. So, she reluctantly runs to the top of the tower and commits the unthinkable. As soon as she wakes up in Carter's room, she hugs him affectionately and thanks him for saving her life. Carter doesn't understand what's going on, but he accepts the hug anyway. It turns out that he's had a major crush on her for years. Meanwhile, Tree is now more confident about solving her murder mystery. Since she knows the identity of her killer, she proceeds happily through the day. Tree signs the Stop Global Warning campaign petition for the girl that asks for her signature every dream. She lays a pillow out for the guy that passes out while talking to his friends. She tells Tim, the guy that she went out on a date with, that she knows he likes guys and he should not try to be something that he is not. She also tells him that love is love. Later, she reaches her dorm and apologizes to Lori for being a terrible roommate. Tree also ends her affair with her married professor Gregory. She says that she can't change what she did in the past, but she wishes to try to be a better person today. At the uptight sorority meeting, Tree arrives with fried high-calorie food and protects one of her friends from being fat-shamed. When Carter Carter comes to the meeting to see her, she unexpectedly kisses him and asks him out. After the sorority meeting, Tree arrives at the restaurant where her dad is waiting for her. She apologizes to him for being late, and the two finally talk after years of being apart. Tree explains that she misses her mom so much that she had started avoiding her birthdays. For her, the 18th of September is the worst day of the year. Tree further adds that it hasn't been easier, but it has been much worse. All the running and hiding has made her miserable. Tree then gets emotional and apologizes to her dad for always ignoring him. She promises that she will be a better daughter from now on. After mending her relationship with her father, Tree gets ready to face the killer. She goes to the campus hospital where Toombs is being kept and steals the gun from the policeman guarding the room. She tells him that Toombs is going to escape and makes him get reinforcements. Once alone, Tree confronts her killer and finally shoots him dead. After this, she sneaks quietly out of the hospital and goes to meet her new boyfriend, Carter. That night, Tree decides to celebrate both her victory and her birthday at the same time. She brings the cupcake given by Lori, blows out the candles, and eats it. The next second, Tree shockingly wakes up in Carter's bed. The loop is somehow still intact, indicating that Toombs was not the masked killer. Worried, Tree rushes out of the room and heads to her dorm. She then starts packing her belongings with the intent of running away. At the same time, her roommate Lori approaches her with the cupcake. Seeing it, Tree concludes something shocking. The previous loop was the only time she had ever eaten the cupcake. Since she died right after it, Tree concludes that Lori had given her a poisoned cupcake. Following this, the movie goes into a flashback in her previous numerous dreams. When Tree threw the poisoned cupcake in the trash, Lori decided to kill her using a different method. So, she put on a scary mask and started her reign of terror. She always framed John Toombs as he was an easy scapegoat. Back in the present, when Tree confronts Lori about all of this, the latter finally comes clean. She admits that she is also having an affair with the handsome Dr. Gregory. But every time she is with him, he always talks about Tree, indicating that he prefers her. This drove Lori mad with jealousy, so she decided to take matters into her own hands. Her ultimate plan was to kill Tree, then kill Dr. Gregory's wife so that she could live with him happily. After revealing all this, Lori attacks Tree and an intense struggle follows. They go back and forth at each other for a while, but in the end, it is Tree who prevails by shoving the poisoned cupcake in Lori's mouth and kicking her out the second story window. The impact kills the evil girl on the spot. In the final scene, Tree wakes up in Carter's room and finds finds her phone ringing with the same happy birthday tune. This freaks her out, and the same events from her dreams start unfolding. But to her relief, Carter admits that he was just playing a prank on her, and it is the 19th of September. Trauma's not funny, Carter, you dickhole. The movie ends as the two share a romantic kiss. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.
Thank you for watching.